conditions became better. I had a mattress. No one harassed me among the officers. But what I kept telling them is that reminding my family of my unjustified detention without trial under the former regime, which caused my family trauma. I did not expect my family to go through the same thing in what we have decided to call New Gambia. Are you seeking legal redress for the conditions of your arrest and what apparently seems like a denial of your fundamental rights being held in captivity for 10 days without charge? Well, I'll still have to talk to my lawyer, but what I know, this is beyond me because the whole nation stood in support of me, in defense of my rights, in defense of democracy. So it's the entire nation that's enraged, it's the entire nation that's seeking answers to questions. But like I said, I'll have to take advice from my legal representatives on the next steps. So finally, if you're drawing a connection between your arrest and your political status in the Gambia, are you therefore saying that your arrest was politically motivated? Well, I believe my arrest was politically motivated. I definitely believe that and most people believe that. Because why? I, I'm one of the Well, I'm one of the uh, loudest voices in this country, the biggest critics of this government, both in the local languages, and I'm very popular in the WhatsApp circles here, and I am on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook. I am on BBC. Actually, the last time I had an interview on BBC Newsday about fuel price uh, situation in this country, a supporter of the NPP released an audio to say that I should be detained because why should BBC talk to me? I am not in government. There has to be a motive behind it. That audio is out there in the open. NPP supporters calling on their government, the incumbent, to arrest me and detain me because I'm making too much noise. That's out there in the open. So will you stop making noise now? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, if anything, they have actually helped to amplify my voice. I will continue to exercise my democratic, fundamental human rights of freedom of speech. I will continue to criticize this government. I will continue to hold them accountable. I'll continue to speak to media, local and international, to make sure that we have a better Gambia, as dreamed, as fought for, so that we have freedom, we have peace, we have progress in this country. That is not going to change. In fact, my voice is already amplified. And I'm speaking there to Momodu Sabali just a short while ago of the opposition United Democratic Party of the Gambia. And we remain in that country where five lawmakers have won... Uh, who won their parliamentary seats under the former president Yaya Jame's party ticket have pe petitioned President Adama Barrow to immediately withdraw Senegalese soldiers stationed in the Fonyi region of the country. Fonyi is the ancestral home of ex-president Yaya Jame and it borders Senegal's troubled region of Casamans where separatists are fighting to secede. Our reporter in the Gambia, Omar Wali, went to the Fonyi region to meet local residents. I am in former President Yahya Jame's home village of Kanilai. To meet a widow whose husband was allegedly shot and killed by Senegalese forces, stays on here. Since the death of my husband, the children and I are being looked after by the villagers. They assist me and my children with food, medical treatment and my children's education. I couldn't care for all of my children otherwise. Two of them are with me here and the rest are with other family members. I'm selling vegetables because I cannot depend completely on villagers. In 2017, residents of Fonyi gathered in Kanilai to protest the ongoing presence of Senegalese troops in their area. But in the end, certain classes, Rohi's husband Haruna Jata lost his life. Eight other people sustained bullet injuries as Senegalese forces opened fire amidst the protest. To this day, Haruna's death is still unresolved. Five years after Haruna's death, no one has been held accountable. His wife, who sells tomatoes and other vegetables at the local market, is demanding a transparent inquiry into her husband's death. President Barrow doesn't care much. Since my husband's death, I did not receive a condolence message from him. Let Senegalese soldiers go, because since they came here, they heap pain and suffering on us. We can't even go to the bush and fetch firewood. We are in a very delicate and dangerous situation. Above all, I'm calling on the authorities to investigate and bring justice to those who killed my husband. That is what I'm demanding from the authorities. 
Some residents in Fonyi see the Senegalese military presence as an occupation. Modu Bojang of Karol village was gracing cattle when fighting broke out between the Senegalese soldiers and the MFDC separatists. Modu, his elder brother and the village head were arrested and detained by the Senegalese soldiers. When the fight broke, I told my wife to take the children and relocate elsewhere. When I arrived at the village, it was parked with Senegalese soldiers. I was arrested with my brother and taken to Senegal. We spent one week in custody. On one occasion, they poured dirty water on us. They hit and kicked us with their military boots football. When they released us, my elder brother became paralyzed because of the beating. The people in this farming community said they live in constant fear due to sporadic gun shots and drone strikes by the Senegalese soldiers. Women have also abandoned their gardens and farms, causing food shortages. Tombong Jeju is among those women who abandoned their farms. Our farms are near the border between Gambia and Senegal, and we are scared to go and farm and get caught in the fighting. The clashes between the Senegalese army and the separatists force us to relocate with our children. We don't want to be shot or get hit by crossfire. The food we have is not enough, and if that finishes, only God knows how we are going to survive. We are tired and our crops are destroyed. Earlier this year, Senegalese forces chasing a gunman lorry carrying timber found themselves in a separatist control area. This incident led to exchange of gunshots during which five Senegalese soldiers were killed and dozen more captured by Kazama's rebels. Almame Jiba is a lawmaker from Jamis home region. He is leading a campaign to ask the ECOWAS mission in the Gambia, also known as ECOMIC, to remove the Senegalese troops. What happened after the army intervention in the Gambia? On the basis of restoration of democracy and freedom is terror we've seen, death we've seen, rape we've seen, poverty and starvation among the people of Fonya are targeted by agents of your government in the name of fighting MFDC rebels. Senegalese soldiers have a mandate to shoot, confiscate and burn lorries carrying timbers from either Kazamas or from other parts of the Gambia en route to the Fonyi region. Recently, further classes led to the displacement of up to 10,000 people in the region and the closing of schools. Some in Fonyi believe they would be much more safer without the Senegalese troops. They fear that if President Barrow fails to take action, more instability could impact on the peace of the entire